This is your last lesson, 6.8, Limiting Reactant and Percent Yield Calculations of Unit 6 moles. So here we are going to look at uh, who le is left at the end of a reaction because you have too much of one of the reactants and who gets completely turned into a product and then calculate percentages from there. So this is where we are in the grand scheme of things. I will not give you notes for the last one. It is just a video review of all of this content. I will give you a worksheet at next quarter when we, I see you and you will be doing that in class as your review. So in these problems, you're going to use the mass to moles to mass calculations, maybe particles to moles or particles to particles particles to volume, any, uh, any range of these will be used in these calculations. So remember, you need to keep this in your mind. Let's look at a simple reaction. You're making cheeseburgers, actually double cheeseburgers. You are using two cheeses, one patty and one bun to make your C2BP cheeseburger. So the mole ratio would be 2 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, as shown over here. Say your dad left you these ingredients, and here nothing was used up. He left you these ingredients and asked you to make double cheeseburgers. And how many can you make? Yes, you can only make 2. And you use the same mole ratio as before, and you use up all of the hamburger buns but you don't use all of the others. So the one that gets used up completely is called the limiting reactant. The others that get left are called excess reactants. You get one patty and two cheese slices. The amount of product made is dependent on the limiting reactant. So keep this in mind. Maybe you should draw this in your notebook so that you understand in a pictures in pictures what each one is. Today we are going to do calculations using the limiting reactant amount given and the amount of products that can be made with that. So here's our first problem. Not sorry, not problem definitions. Write these down and this is how you know which one is which. Limiting uh, reactant versus percent yield. The amount of product that can be formed based on the limiting reactant is called the theoretical yield. This is 100% of the product when it's made. It's, um, so you have to calculate how many grams, moles, uh, molecules, or volume that's going to be. Then what is... The limiting reactant, it is the one that gets completely used during the chemical reaction to form a product and none is left at the end. The others will remain at the end, unconsumed. This reactant is present in less moles than is required to completely react with the other remaining reactants. So the amount of the product formed is based and limited to the moles of the limiting reactant. In our previous example, it was the hamburger buns that was the limiting reactant. The amount of product actually collected at the end of the re reaction when you clean it up and everything is known as the actual yield. For example, let's go to our hamburger example. Um, say you made two hamburgers. Every time you make two hamburgers, you have a naughty German Shepherd dog who's a greedy hog. He eats half of that. So your actual yield is not two hamburgers. It's going to be one and a half hamburgers. Does that make sense? Because half of, it, half of one is lost each time you make one. In the experimental scenario, you lose sample when you're cleaning it up like you're washing your sol um, s solid substance that you made, like a precipitate with water, some of it gets pulled out when you just decant or pour out the excess liquid on top. This value is always less than 100 because some stuff is lost and you might have had experimental errors. 
What is the actual yield? It's the two 1.5 hamburgers left after the dog ate it. We represent it as a percent yield, as a percentage of the total or the theoretical yield will be at the bottom like this and you put the actual yield at the top and you're going to express it as a percentage. We are going to calculate that too. So in our hamburger case, this would be 1.5 and this would be 2 times 100. Here's our first problem. Question 1. 8.22 grams of aluminum sulfate reacts with 4.9 grams of lithium metal according to the equation below. Write this one. It's asking you to figure out the limiting reactant. And I've given you the molar masses of each of the elements in this chemical reaction. The first step you do is balance the equation. Next step, you can find the amount. In stoichiometry, amount can be moles, particles, uh, ma masses, or volumes. So here we are dealing with grams and grams. So in this case, we're going to deal with grams. You're going to find the gram amount of each reacted needed based on the balanced equation mole ratio of these two. So we'll have to balance it and dimensional analysis. So let's do the balancing first. So the mole ratio is 1 to 6 to 3 to 2. Step Two, you're going to find the amount of each reacted needed based on the balanced equation mole ratio. You can use any of the two reactants here. We will just go with aluminum sulfate. You can do lithium if you want, but in the end you get the same, you will find out who the limiting reactant is, the same answer. So here is the molar mass calculation for aluminum sulfate. And it ends up being 342 grams per mole if I round the numbers to a whole number. I'm going to start my dimensional analysis with the given value of aluminum sulfate. I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to try to find out with 8.22 grams how much lithium is used up in grams. So then I'm going to multiply this by a factor with grams of aluminum sulfate at the bottom, this one. This is the mass of one mole. I'm going to make a factor out of it. Aluminum sulfate grams cancelled out. Now I need to get rid of moles of aluminum sulfate. So I'm going to use the molar, mole ratio from the balanced equation for aluminum sulfate and lithium here. And then moles of aluminum sulfate cancels out and I'm with moles of lithium. But I need to go to grams of lithium. So I know one mole is seven grams of lithium. So I'm going to put a yet another factor which will cancel out moles of lithium. And now I'm left with grams of lithium is the unit that I need to find. So you multiply 8.22 times six times seven divided by 342, you get this answer. That means you actually only use 1.01 grams of lithium, not 4.8 grams. This is too much for the, um, this much of aluminum sulfate. So who is the excess reactant? This guy. And this guy is the limiting reactant. So you will have 4.9 minus 1.01 which is 3.89 grams of excess lithium at the end. Practice this kind of equations and uh, problems so that you can understand how to find the limiting reactant. Let's go to our final problem. Finding the percent yield. So here I will tell you um, the amount of one thing and the amount of the other thing recovered, you have to find the total mass, moles, particles, volume of the other thing that should have been made if everything went right, and then you express it as a percentage. So first things first, again you balance the equation, then you find the theoretical yield, that is the yield that you're supposed to get. So and then uh, you do dimensional analysis and calculate the percentile. 
So let's read our problem. A student mixes 0.75 moles barium chloride with excess silver nitrate, forming a silver chloride precipitate. C in S, it's a solid which he recovers or collects at the end of the reaction. After the reaction, he washed the precipitate twice in water and removed other contaminants from the reaction. So he poured out the excess liquid after it settled at the bottom uh, out into the sink. He did that twice. You have done that in the lab with me. And then he dries it up so that there's no water remaining inside a desiccator. Once the drying is done, all he had left was 160.3 grams of alumina, uh, silver chloride. This is your actual yield. I'm not going to tell you what is this actual yield all the time. You need to figure that out because it's what he collected at the end of the experiment. And now I'm asking you to calculate the percent yield. So first things first, you are going to balance this guy. That's the mole ratio, 1, 2, 1, 2. Now you're going to find the molar mass of silver chloride because you've been given the grams that you recovered at the end. That is going to be 143.32 uh, grams per mole. So one mole is this many grams. Now I am going to find the theoretic yield from this amount of barium chloride, which is the limiting reactant because we have excess silver nitrate uh, precipitate that he recovered. That means ex silver nitrate, this guy is excess, this is the limiting reagent. So I'm going to find out how much silver chloride is made with that. So I put the mole ratio of this guy and this guy over here. Now we have to cancel out moles of silver chloride. So you're going to put this one as a factor. One mole is equal to... 430, uh, four, uh, sorry, 143.32 grams silver chloride. Now you can cancel moles of silver chloride and you have the unit you want at the... So your theoretical yield ends up becoming 214.98 grams of silver chloride. So with this one and the actual yield, you can find your percent yield, which is this number, the actual amount you collected after you cleaned up your precipitate, and the amount you should have gotten if you didn't lose any sample of your precipitate, um, times 100. So then you are going to do this. You're going to plug it into this formula, and you will get this answer. That is your final percent yield. Try to do problems like this and uh, the exit ticket and be familiar with this stuff. Now I'm going to do a review of everything we learned. There's basically three things. The limiting reactant is completely used up in a reaction and determines the amount of product formed in a reaction because all of it gets converted into a product, not the other guys. The percent yield is the ratio of the amount of product recovered, the actual yield, from the expected or theoretical yield. You put the actual yield on the top, the one you recover, and the one you calculate with your stoichiometry calculation at the bottom, times 100. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you.